Hi, welcome to the Bridge Podcasts. We hope you enjoy the following message. For more information on all that's happening at the Bridge Church, please visit www.bridge-church.com. Hallelujah. (laughs) Did everyone have a good new year? Amen. Are you ready to fast? Praise God. Oh, wow. Are you ready to fast? <laughs> wow. mm. You know, that's the start of a year. Don't forget that the first fruits of anything are always important. So what better time of the year than now? Amen. This can be your fa- you, this, this fast can be part of your first fruit sacrifice this year. God loves your first fruits. He doesn't like secondhand stuff. He likes our first fruits, amen. So I believe that that first meal that you miss, all right, is that that moment you step out of your comfort zone, you step into the faith zone. You step out of your comfort zone into the supernatural zone. That the first time you're obedient, you say, I'm committing to do this. I believe that's what's going to happen. This fast is going to bring supernatural increase to you here today. Amen? It's going to bring supernatural increase. Don't be discouraged if you find it difficult. (laughs) There's going to be resistance. You can bet on it. There's going to be resistance. And um, if you bail out, then understand that there is now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. Just take a step back, take a deep breath, and get back on with it again. Amen? So don't be crushed if you bail out of the fast on day, the end of day one <laughs> or day two or day three. It doesn't matter. Even if you like, oh, I've got to, I've, I've, I've fasted diligently. It's day 17, but I broke today. There is now, therefore, no condemnation. You just get back on the fast and you do it till the end. Amen? So... We usually take some time at this time of the year to, to, to bring a message on fasting, but this year we've got some brochures like this on the, at the back there. 21 days that will impact your year, prayer and fasting, instructions and guidelines. Grab one of these at the back. If there's not enough, we will run some more off. And at the end of the service, we're going to give you a, a link to Jensen Franklin Ministries. They have got an absolutely incredible 21-day fasting devotional I've downloaded it into my um, iPad. It's amazing. We, we've, we're going to do it every day for 21 days. It looks life-changing. It really does. So we've got this as information here because obviously we obviously want you to understand as well if fasting is new to you, you don't know much about it, we don't want you to take any chances with your health. We don't want you to get sick or anything. So make sure that you understand the the methods and the principles of fasting. You'll find them all inside here very clearly. You know, thank God you're not a Methodist minister in the times of John Wesley. Do you know that they had to fast three days a week? If you were a Wesleyan minister, you had to fast three days a week. Wow! You know, do you know it's not that difficult? When it becomes a part, when you embrace it, it becomes part of your lifestyle. And, uh, you know, if you fast alternate days or whatever, you can fast for three days of a week. And it will really make a difference in your life. Encourage one another as as you fast. Don't use the fast as an opportunity to boast. Boast on the Lord. It's his strength that's going to get us through it. You know, there was a, we, we haven't got it here, but there is. Maybe next week we'll do it. We'll show you a little short video clip of, of the martyr of fasting. <laughs> Everywhere he goes, everyone knows, I am fasting. And it's like, we don't need to know you're fasting. We know we've all been called to a fast. Let's just fast. And if, if anything, boast on, boast on the Lord. Amen. And so he'll sustain us through the fast. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I've got a message this morning. And uh, is the slide up? No. Um, There we go. The message title is One Thing I Do. What I'd like to say is last year um, it was a spirit thing. Um, Just very innocently, young Lewis got his words mixed up when we were praying before band practice. And he said, uh, New Year's 
we were talking about New Year's resolutions, and he tripped up over his words and he said, a New Year's revolution. And I'm like, you genius. This is, the, this is it. This is the theme. And that was our theme until Easter. We said we, we, everything that we taught on, everything that we did, we were, we were talking about revolutionary changes in our lives. And this year, we've, we've been praying about it. I've been thinking about it and, 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 and talking with Pastor Bernie, and we've been talking about it and praying into it. And so I believe this year, our theme for this early part of this year up until Easter is see a victory. See a victory. See a victory. We're going we're, <laughs> we're to be focusing on victory Amen. the first part of this year. That's, that's good. Amen. Amen. We won't even get round to the defeats. We're going to focus on victory. Amen. And so that's what we're going to do. We've... Um, we're, we're, we're also this year very conscious of adding souls to the kingdom. We're going to set a target that will come. It's already in my spirit. And it's going to be plain for all of us to see these are the souls we want to add to the kingdom numerically. Amen? Amen. You have to start somewhere. Amen? And I've, I've got, a, got a bit of a fire in my belly about this. <laughs> This year, I want to see the church thrive. I want to see you all thrive by being challenged to reach people in your world. And, and, and just by who you are, the, the beautiful people that you are, attract people into God's kingdom. Amen. So uh, yesterday morning, I, I was out running uh, our local park run. You missed it. And uh, there were probably nearly 200 New Year's runners out there. And to, I'll be honest to say that I struggled was an understatement. It was a big understatement. My main aim was simply to keep on going, not stop, not walk. Thankfully, I managed both of those. I didn't stop, I didn't walk. And, uh, you know, the word says that bodily exercise profits a little bit. It does profit a little bit, but I tell you, I never felt profitable at the end. <laughs> I, you know, and, and you could see it was the New Year's, you know, we still, all the people with turkey tum, you know, it was like, we're, we're here, it's the first Saturday of the year, and park runs on, you know, you know for the next three weeks, every gymnasium in North Asia is going to be packed solid, you know, and we know that, so I'd avoided the temptation to look at my watch the entire event, I thought, I'm not looking, I'm not looking, I, I'm just going to, I've just not, I can't stop, I'm not going to look. And so I knew if I looked, I'd just discourage myself, you know. And so, because we'd been doing so well earlier in the year, you know, we've got, we've got this, uh, this hare that we follow. His name's Lewis. And we put him out in the front. And he, and he goes for it. And we're like, right, there's the hare. Follow the hare. And so that's what we were doing. So I only looked at my watch after I crossed the, the, the finishing line. So I looked at my watch and do you know what? I was really disappointed. You know, I'd remembered how I'd built it up previously in 2019, especially at the start of 2019. And although I had have had a wee layoff for quite a while, I was really shocked by how long it took me to run a measly five kilometers. You know what I mean? And so I was kind of feeling a little bit down. And then a word jumped up in my spirit. And, 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 and this, I believe, what, what, what God was saying to me, it's a slow start, David, but it's a start. It's a slow start, but it's a start. And, you know, some people just don't even get their wheels off the ground. They don't get any lift in their wings. They don't get the jet boost on. They don't even get off the ground. Do you know what? Don't be discouraged if things are not happening. Oh, it's a new year. I've got all... It might be a slow start, but it's a start. And you make a start. With what you've got, you make a start. So I encourage you this morning, <laughs> make a start. And today, we declared the fast last week. Today is the beginning of our fast. So we have to begin sometime. We have to begin somewhere. Amen? Whoever is here today that's contemplated on the fast and you've chosen to fast and pray with us for the next 21 days, you will experience resistance. Can anyone vouch for that? You'll experience resistance. But you've chosen to begin You've chosen to go on the journey of the fast, amen. You'll be rewarded for doing that. Hallelujah. 
You know, there's something about resistance. Resistance is there to slow you down. Resistance slows you down. But gradually, the resistance that you experience in the initial stages of whatever you're doing, that resistance doesn't tax you in the same way as you move on. So you might think this is really hard, but see in two weeks' time, what, what was on day one is not going to be hard at all. Amen? You're going to adapt to it. You're going to be strengthened. You're going to be able to deal with more resistance as your spirit and your body are strengthened through the fast. Jesus did this all the time with his disciples. He always put them into, posi into positions and situations where they would be stretched to the max. Jesus wasn't, he's like, I'm not giving you guys an easy ride. Come with me. If you follow me, take up your cross daily. If you follow me, it's not going to be easy, but you know what? I'm going to put you into all these situations. There's going to be resistance. In fact, people might even be, the worst resistance you get might be from the, the people that are closest to you. He says, but you know what? You're going to be strengthened through this. And so you've made a choice to achieve a certain outcome. And remember, this isn't the fast that we've chosen. It's the fast that God's chosen. And if you want to read about the fast that God has chosen, you can go to that chapter in Isaiah. Anyone know what it is? Yeah, and you can read about, in fact, it's, uh, in fact this is homework. <laughs> go to Isaiah and read that chapter on God's chosen fast. It'll blow your mind when you see the rewards, when you see the benefits of it for, for you and for, 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 for the church. It's, it's amazing. So go and read that. Amen? When you go on the fast that God has chosen, you will experience significant breakthroughs. You'll experience significant breakthrough in the areas that you're focusing on. And I'm sure everyone here today has got different things that they're focusing on for the new year. Amen? So this thing, one thing I do is really a message about focus. Focus brings clarity. Amen? A, few, a couple of years ago, I think it was, I, I, I'm like, do you know what? And Linda will tell you everything. I'm like, like this. I, I, needed spect I needed glasses. So I went to the opticians in Stewarton. I says, you know, and I got the eye test and you sit behind the machine and you look at things and it's like, fine, okay, when's my glasses coming? And I'll never forget when I went back into the optometrist and I got my glasses, having not worn specs since I was about five to correct a, a squint, I put them on and I couldn't believe it. I was like, I couldn't even speak. I was like, wow, it's so clear. Everything was so, everything was absolutely pin sharp. It was amazing. And um, I hadn't realized that over, over years, my sight had been diminishing. It had been becoming weaker and I had just been trying to compensate for it. But the but the, the new focus that new specs brought was just, it was a revelation to me. And so focus is really important. Focus brings clarity. Focus, focus shuts the doors on all sorts of distractions and it, and it, and it, and it keeps us single-minded. Amen? Is, do any of you feel difficult to maintain concentration on one thing for a long period of time? Uh, hands going up everywhere. Me too. Very, very difficult. But that is what is called for. And if we can develop our focus, we can do amazing things. Amen? And focus is something that the Bible affirms and it teaches us. And, you know, if we read through the Word, we can read about a lot of great men and women who are renowned for this character trait of focus, single-mindedness, absolute focus, and I'm going to use a couple of examples this morning. I'm going to use King David. I'm going to use Paul. And I want you to go to your, word, go to the, your Bibles this morning. I'm going to use these guys as, as, a, as an example. And when you start to read their stories, you begin to see and discover that they were intensely focused. But one phrase emerges out of the word when you start to read about their lives and can you guess what that phrase is? That phrase is one thing. One thing. That, that phrase, those two words, one thing, 
emerges out of the, out of the word. And that drew my eye, and I thought, what is the significance in this one thing I do? One thing. So go to Psalms 27, verse 46, this morning. It says, one thing, in verse 4, the one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek the most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. For he will conceal me when troubles come. He will hide me in his sanctuary. He will place me out of reach on a high rock. Isn't that a belter? Amen. He'll lift you out of reach of the enemy. Can you just imagine them snapping at your heels? And God's like, I've elevated, this, this, is, my, this is Joe, this, I'm elevating him. He's mine, he's my, he's my son. You can't get to him. You can't reach him. I will hold my head high above my enemies who surround me. At his sanctuary, I will offer sacrifices with shouts of joy, singing and praising the Lord with music. So what was his focus? His focus was one thing. One thing consumed him. One thing dominated his thoughts to live in God's house and to be intimately and passionately connected to God. That's all he wanted. One thing, to live in your house all the days of my life. That's powerful if you can grasp that. We can ask, I don't know about you, but I ask for more than one thing. I'm asking for all sorts of things all the time. And the power in this message is that sometimes we need to realize that all we really need is the presence of God. One thing. One thing I ask. One thing I desire. I don't care about the rest. I just need one thing. God, never leave me. I want your presence with me every day. One thing. Amen. It was as if it was all that he needed. And, and we live in a word, world full of needs and wants. Amen? It's, we, every day, you know, and especially if you have a young family. Mind you, it doesn't change when they get to teenagers either. I need, I need, I need. I want, I want, I want. I need this, I want that. I need, and, it's all, and, and, and sometimes I see, I see myself and my kids when I was their age, you know, I can understand my, my, my dad's anger with me sometimes when I was so self-centered. You know, like, I need this. I need this. Why do you need that? I just do. I just, I just need it. Why? Well, because he's got it and he's got it. And, I can, and, you know, and it's like, King David's like, do you know what? I realize that there's only one thing that I really need. And he sought after it, continually prayed for it, and this is, this is good. He deliberately arranged his affairs. He deliberately arranged his life so that he could have that experience. How many of us are deliberate enough that we contrive to, you know what? I'm cutting that off. I'm saying no to that. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm making a way here for there just to be one thing. And that's what David did. He wanted that experience so, so much that he deliberately arranged. There's no, there's no chance in life. If you really want to experience, if we really want to experience God's presence, he doesn't share it easily. In fact, I don't think he shares it at all. He's like, just make me your focus. Make me the one thing you desire. And you will, you'll, you'll cross, I believe we cross into a realm where life is completely un- unbelievable to us now, you know? It was like my glasses. Wow, I couldn't, can't believe it. Everything has come into focus. It was amazing. So now we have to understand that we're going to have to take proactive steps to, the, to that destination that God wants us to see and to have. Do you, know, do you believe that God has a destination for you? He has a destination for each of us. He has a destination for this church. 
We will never get there being passive in our life. God wants us to be proactive about everything that we do. He wants us to be intentional and deliberate about all that we do. And so passivity will leave us disappointed. And I felt like that last year. I mean, you can, I'm sure, I'm sure our, our comrades at early morning prayer would sometimes sense, you know what, is, are you even in this? You know, I felt, I feel that myself sometimes. I feel so passive in my prayer. I feel so passive in my devotions, passive when it comes to reading the word, passive in my faith. But you'll never get, you'll never experience fulfillment if you're passive in, in these things. We have to become, we have to take them by the scruff of the neck and we have to, yeah, take it by the scruff of the neck, be intentional. So I'm going to be proactive about it. And, and then resistance will come. And then it's like, yeah, well, I experienced this resistance and I've overcome that resistance. Well, then more resistance will come. Oh, hang on, but I've built up already. I'm on level five. You know, I'm on level five. I can deal with this resistance and I can go on. I can do more. Be proactive about that. I think at the first sign of resistance, many of us just say, no. 2020 can be totally different if, you, if, you, if we lose that attitude. 2020 can be amazing. Amen? And I say amazing, and I, I, I talk about amazing for the kingdom. Okay? Let's remember what, the, who this is for. Amen? And so... It's like we just have to deliberately arrange our lifestyles. And people around you, I think they'll be like, you know, they're going to start seeing in you, you're, you're pretty single. You're pursuing one thing here. You know, take it easy. Take it easy, you know. Take it easy. No. You don't let human opinion stop you from being totally focused and single-minded. No, one thing I desire. No, back off a little bit. Man, just take it easy. No, I can't take it easy. I can't take it easy. There could, be a, there could be a global war tomorrow. Anything could happen. I'm st we can stand here today and we can say that anything can happen. By midnight tonight, the news media could have announced a war. Or anything. And sometimes we need to pray, Father God, teach us to number our days and recognize how few they are. Teach us, Lord, to number our days. And that's not a morbid thing to say. It's saying, he's saying, wake up. Just wake up. Recognize that <laughs> time is short. Amen? I won't labor on that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of us will need to bring in discipline. Who hates that word? You know, discipline. But there's a law of discipline, which if we implement it and we knuckle down to it, discipline is one of the most transformative things that we can do. Be disciplined. Be disciplined. Don't forsake things that you've set up in your daily routine. Don't forsake your devotional time, your quiet time, whatever it is. Be disciplined. Um, God loves a diligent and a faithful and a disciplined saint. Amen? So this, um, if you go now in, your words, in the word, please, to Philippians 3. And now we're moving on to Paul in Philippians 3. And just before we go there, you've got that in your word, just at the very end of our last verse of scripture where is it, we, we all know that David was uh, so strong on worship. He was like King David. It was like worship was his, he br lived and breathed praise and worship to God. And um, it's, 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 when you see that there, the, 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 the end result of that one thing he desired, isn't it amazing? It always comes back to bringing it back to God. 
to bring worship back to him, to bring, bring praise back to him. And one thing, I, just before we move on, I, I wanna say this this morning, and I believe it's, it's God saying that this in terms of, because we've prophesied it, we've spoken, we've prayed it, that this place will, is a house of praise, that the noise will be a native sound that will go out of here, people will hear it in the surrounding area, but you know what? Our business for eternity is going to be praising and worshiping God. We should make it our business here too. That should be what, we, what our occupation, a description of our occupation here is worshiping saint, worshiping Christian. We, we're worshipers. And I want to encourage you this year to seek release in your worship. Don't suppress the shout. Don't suppress the, the dance. Don't suppress the yada. The Hebrew word yada, is, is, it means a violent throwing out of your hands. A violent throwing out of your hands. That is so powerful in its expression when you do that for God, you know, you know. How, how, how it really moves me when I see these movie, old movies like Gladiator and everything and the guys there pledging allegiance and they beat their chests with such force. It's like their fists nearly come out the back, you know. It's like it speaks to me of, of intensity and passion and purpose. And our, our worship, when we allow our worship to go to those heights where from the front to the back, the back to the front, there's expression, just let, just let the Holy Spirit express himself through you. He helps us to worship and to pray the right way, in a God-honoring way. He does that. And, and when we let him worship and pray through us, we know that we'll always be in order. And we'll always, it'll never be disorderly when the Holy Spirit is praying and praising and worship, when you're letting him move you. Amen? Philippians 3 Paul says, I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection. But I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I've not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing. Here's Paul saying, I'm focusing on one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Let all who are spiritually mature, amen, agree on these things. If you disagree on some point, I believe God will make it plain to you. But we must hold on to the progress we've already made. Dear brothers and sisters, pattern your lives after mine and learn from those who follow our example. For I've told you often before, and I say it again with tears in my eyes, can you imagine that? That there are many whose conduct shows that they are really enemies of the cross of Christ. They're headed for destruction. Here's a good one for coming in, into the fast. Their God is their appetite. Their God is their appetite. <laughs> They brag about shameful things and they think only about this life here on earth, but we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives and we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our savior. He will take our weak mortal bodies, amen, and change them into glorious bodies like his own using the same power with which he will bring everything under his control. Verse 13, I focus on this one thing. So what is the one thing? What is the one thing he's focusing on there? What is it? Well, we, say, we, say, we see there forgetting the past. We prayed that this morning through in the office. S closing the back doors, slamming them shut. F you know, w w the things that I do remember about the past and that I, we must remember is God's grace, God's goodness. Never forget that. But there's some things that are forgettable and should be forgotten. Amen? So he's, he says, forget the past. Look forward to what's ahead. In fact, the, uh, another translation says, strain forward. 
Now I can imagine, I, 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 maybe I won't do this because I'll be too ugly looking, but can, if, if you can put that straining face on, you put your straining face on, your best straining face. <laughs> your straining face, you know, straining. That doesn't speak to me that, you know, hey, I'm going for an easy win here. I'm going for, it's easy. It, no, it's a, I'm, I'm striving and I'm straining towards what? Completing the race and receiving the prize. Forgetting the past and looking forward to the future are the two prerequisites of the third thing, which is really the thing, the one thing. I want to receive the prize of the upward calling in Christ Jesus. What is an upward call and where does it take us to? An upward call takes us off of this earth. An upward call takes us to heaven. What happens to us when we're in heaven? We're joined, our, 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 our spirits, souls, and bodies are glorified and joined on that, on, on that resurrection day. We're, that's what Paul's saying, do you know what? There's my prize. My prize is there. When all of, all of me, all the parts of me come together in a glorified way, you guys are all going to look amazing in heaven. You are, you know what? You're going to be, you're going to look awesome. That's the, the, you know, and what a prize to strive towards, to strain towards, amen? That was the one thing. And Paul's saying here, he just wants to imitate his Savior. He says, be ye imitators of me as I imitate Christ. Imitate me, you know. And, and the thing about Paul, he even invites pain into the process, he invites um, discomfort. He ex even expects pain and discomfort to be in the process. Because you know why? He says, you know what? Jesus, you experienced it. You, had, you, you went through excruciating pain and discomfort for me. And I, I can do the same thing for you. Because where it took you is where it's going to take me. It res you, you were resurrected to, to, to the right hand of the Father, new life. See if I experience a wee bit of this, that's going to take me right there as well. It's going to bring me right there. I'm going to share in your sufferings, and I don't, I don't care. But it's not easy to suffer, is it? It's not easy to suffer. And so... A little bit earlier in the chapter, it's not on, on the screen, Paul says, you know, some things in my life I consider filthy rags, rubbish, garbage, compared to what I'm looking forward to, what the prize is. And um, he's just, that compelled him to keep on going. And, and you know, P Paul was a, he was a good Hebrew he was, uh, he, was intel he was learned, he was, a, he was a good Jewish boy, circumcised. All of those things. He was a zealot. He knew the law. And he says here, see all of that stuff? I count it as filthy rags. That's quite a statement. Because the, the, and that's why we know that the law will not save us. It's faith in Jesus Christ. That's the only thing that will save our soul. It's just knowing that, Jesus, you died for me. And, and Paul's like, all of these things, I count them as filthy rags. Everything that he'd previously, probably that were all about him, you know, this is, you know, who are you, Paul? Well, this is me. You know, you, you can, there's my CV. You can read it. It's fantastic. It's a fantastic CV. I take a lot of pride in that CV. Look what I've done. Look at my accomplishments. Look, look what I've done for, for the, the Sanhedrin. Look what I've done for the te Look what I've done for the synagogue. Look what I've done. And it's like he gets to a stage in his life where he realizes that all of that means nothing. It's worthless. Absolutely worthless. Because we're not saved by works anyway. 
He says, absolutely worthless. And then Paul, his life is transformed. And then he says, you know what? Now I'm going to instruct other people. So Timothy, where are you? And whoever else was in Paul's world, he instructed them and set an example for them to be godly and to get all of the, the, he's he's basically, anyone he came into contact with, I believe is saying the same thing, get rid of all of the clutter and just focus on one thing. Just do one thing, amen? So godliness, righteousness, right standing with God, all of these things. And this wasn't easy in that day because even Timothy, he would have been subject to the legalistic influences of the day and everything else, the law and all of this kind of stuff. And Paul's saying, just focus on one thing, be transformed by God, amen? Be transformed by God. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. It says there, Don't waste time arguing over godless ideas and old wives' tales. There have been a few old wives' tales told in in my time. Instead, train yourself to be godly. Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better, promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. This is a trustworthy saying, and everyone should accept it. This is why we work hard and continue to struggle. For our hope is in the living God, who is the Savior of all people, and particularly of all believers. Teach these things and insist that everyone learns them. Don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. And all the young people said, Amen. Be an example. You know, young people can do ministry better than some of us oldies. They can evangelize. They can lay hands on the sick. They can do all of those things. So when you're six-year-old comes and says, mommy, can I lay hands on your sore knee? Say, yeah, of course you can, pray. We, we, we were visiting, I don't know if you remember, uh, up in Aviemore. We were visiting friends up in Aviemore. They have a young family, Christian family. And uh, we, we stopped in to visit, to visit him and his wife and family. And we were sitting talking and the wee boy was looking at me staring at me the whole time. It's like the beady, he just wouldn't take his eyes off me, he stared at me the whole time. And I was getting a little bit like uncomfortable with this. And he got up and he walked straight over to me and he laid his hands on, uh, on my eye. He says, I want to pray for your sight. Can I knock me over with a feather? It just, it just, you need healing. <laughs> you need something. So I'm getting up, and he got up and walked across the living room and put his hand right on my eye, and he started praying. He was, do you remember? It's only a tiny tot. And um, wow. Suffer the little children to come unto me. Just, that's it. And so, don't let anyone think less of you because you're young. Be an example to believers in all you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, and your purity. Let that sink in, church. Be an example to believers in all you say, all you do, all you think. The thoughts that are in your heart will eventually become actions on the outside. What is internal will eventually become external. Make no bones about it. What is internal will eventually come out. Make sure that the fruit that comes out is the good kind. Hallelujah. And I believe at the start of this year as well that one thing that we need to remember and, 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 and cultivate is the foundation of love that's here. Love one another. Love one another. And so until I get there, focus on reading the scriptures to the church. Verse 13 again. Until I get there, focus on reading the scriptures to the church, encouraging the believers and teaching them. Don't neglect the spiritual gift you received through the prophecy spoken over you when the elders of the church laid their hands on you. Give your complete attention to these matters. Don't just, no, just give me a wee bit of, just 
Give me a wee bit of attention. Give your complete attention to these matters. Throw yourself into your tasks. Throw yourself. What The Bible says throw yourself into your tasks so that everyone will see that you're making progress. Keep a close watch on how you live and on your teaching. Stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation and the salvation of those who hear you. Message there. Beware that you, by not focusing on the one thing, you become a stumbling block to those that are in your world. We will be accountable. We, we're rewarded for those that we introduce and that we, that we introduce to Jesus, but we're accountable for those that are lost due to our, due to our um, fill in the blank. Amen? So, We've got this whole narrative here about running the race, focusing, keeping things, our eyes on one thing. And even, even Hebrews, if you read the book of Hebrews, it says, throw off the sin that so easily anchors you, holds you in the past. It hinders you from the race that Christ has, that has appointed for us. Amen. It's calling for us to focus on things. Amen. That, that's in Hebrews 12, by the way. We won't read this for the sake of time, but read Hebrews, the beginning of Hebrews 12, where it says, strip off all your weights and, and run the race that he said. You know, a lot of you probably know I, I'm a biker. Now, I wouldn't go to the park run with my leathers on, all right? Can you imagine me running around there with my, my leathers on, you know? They weigh about 10 kilograms, the whole suit, you know? I, I want to be streamlined. I want it to be simple. I don't, want to be cl- I don't want to be weighed down with anything, so I am going to dress appropriately for what I'm going to do. There's a message in that. Wear the appropriate suit for what you're going to do. Amen? Simple, keeping it simple allows us to focus. Keeping things simple and focus brings everything back to the basics and the fundamentals. Sometimes we just need to come back to basics, back to the fundamentals of our faith. Amen? Now, that might not necessarily be easy, but it's, it gives room for what's most important in our lives. Amen? We're in, we're in good company when we, absol- when we recognize that some things we do have to take off and clear out. Whose company would we be in when we do that? Jesus. At least two occasions, he had to go and cleanse the temple. He had to clear. I'm having a clear out today. Uh, Give me that, whatever it was. And he went in there, man, and he cleansed the temple. He cleared it out. So when when we take that, when we take that and use it in our own lives, we're in good company. Amen? We're in good company. An interesting little thing just about the power of focus and simplicity is that most of you probably heard of Google. And, um, well, I actually remember Alta Vista. Anyone remember Alta Vista? Google, Yahoo, MSN, Bing, whatever. I've got, I just want you to have a look at something and take note of something. Could I have that slide, not the Google one, one of the other two up there? Oh, here we go. So there's the Yahoo search page or landing page. Anyone familiar with it? Yeah, you've probably seen that before. Now, there we go, all this stuff all around there. Go to the next one, the the MSN one, or MSN Bing, there it is. See that page? There you go, little bar at the top, you put in whatever to search. Now go to Google. What do you, rec- what do you notice about Google? There's nothing else there to distract you. So when you go on to search for Hebrews or Scripture, you don't go down the trail watching, you know, s- some YouTube video. And then that leads you to another YouTube video, which leads you to another thing, which leads you to another. Google's page, simplicity, total simplicity. And they are now, I believe, I think, probably number one in the world for their culture 
And what everything they portray is simple and it's focused. And I'm like, do you know what? We can still learn a lesson or two from, from the world. Amen? Can't we? Yeah? Amen? They, they took all of our biblical principles and used them in business. So can we get some back? Amen? And so you notice there, there's no distractions. No rabbit trails to go down. And in this world that we live in, it's becoming a much more complicated place. It's a com- who, who, is the world a simple place? It's pretty complex, isn't it? It's a pretty complex place. And so I believe that people are hungry right now for simple things. They're hungry for simplicity. Why do, why, why, why we don't want people to come into church and be faced with complica- com- complexity, complicated stuff. We, we, we just want it to be one thing. What is the one thing of the, ch- of, of the church? S- Jesus. Souls saved, lives changed, a place where God's presence is. That's it. That's all it is. And so I believe that people are going to respond to simple. People will respond to simple. When we share our faith, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Simple is effective. Some of us think we don't have to be a theologian. In fact, sometimes that's the, that can be the, the, the worst thing. We just need to be simple in, in our sharing of our faith. One thing. When you do one thing well, people will be attracted to you. Amen? It's like we're, the, we're, we're a bit like the moon. The moon is not a source of light. The moon borrows light from the sun. Be, be, be the moon. You, we borrow light from, the, from our Father God. It's his glory that reflects on us that has an effect on other people's lives. Amen? Keep it simple. When the church does one thing well, people will be changed. Amen? Matthew 22, what is the first and, 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 most, and the greatest commandment? You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all, all your mind. That was the first. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. 2020 is waiting on us. There's people out there waiting on us. There's opportunities out there that are waiting on us right now to respond. There's all sorts of things out there. God is waiting on us too to respond. And I wrote this down, to respond, to be filled, to be fueled, and to be driven by the love of God and to do this for Jesus. And it's like a car. You go, you fill it up, the fuel travels from the tank to the engine and drives the car forward. That's how I see the church going. Be being filled and that fuel, the Holy Ghost, that passion driving us forward. Amen. Praise God. All we've got to do is release the power of one thing. Release the power of focus. Amen. And that can disrupt your family, your, your life, your workplace. The, the, release the power to disrupt the way of the world. You have power within you to disrupt what's going on around you and to bring God into any situation. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's, as I close the message now, let's... Some of us, including me, I, I know I have to repent sometimes of my self-reliance. Repent of, you know what, I can, I'm struggling, but I'll push through, I can manage this. But David, you, no, I'm right here for you, David. Just ask me and my Holy Spirit will give you a sermon. My Holy Spirit will help you with this. My Holy Spirit will help you to pray. No, I can, I can do it. I've got the knowledge. Uh, no, you're missing the point. This is why I'm here. I'm your, I'm, 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 I want to fill you with the fuel that it needs for you to live a life that glorifies me. Praise the Lord. Amen. So this year, I believe we're not going to be stuck in mediocrity. We're going places. Amen. 
We're going for souls. There's going to be a number before us soon. It'll be a, it'll be a, a, it'll be a Holy Ghost number. That's what we're going to be going for. And we will, we, you know what? We'll do whatever it takes to make sure that those souls are added to the kingdom. They might not be added here, but they'll be added. Amen? We might even count some souls that are one in California or wherever. Amen? Praise God. Wherever, wherever you go, we'll renew our focus on soul winning this year. Praise the Lord. Thanks for listening. Remember to visit our website, www.bridge-church.com and connect with us via Facebook and Twitter.